Welcome back to another Uncommon Man podcast where we help legendary men live uncommon lives by eliminating and avoiding burnout and experiencing what it is to lean into their potential, potential, have amazing relationships, awesome business and career. Today, have Harry and Nick with us. We are diving into exploring and explaining what we understand or what we have learned to be the modern man. Why and what are the differences between what we are now to what we've been in the past and what we believe are some of the some of the major factors that impact who we are what we are and how we interact in the world now compared to possibly some of the things that were in the past some of the things obviously we're going to be digging in and discovering for ourselves on this because we have not lived through history we have our only our years of experience and the things that we have studied, but we hope to share with you some insights and some really helpful resources to navigate the world that we navigate now, that you navigate now, and the resources that we've shared with our guys on coaching journeys that have enabled them to live just an unbelievable life coming out of some pretty dark spaces. So as always, there will be some really beneficial and helpful resources for you in this. Stick around, please, if you love it, share it with your mates. Our mission is to help stronger men to become stronger communities. So let's dive in. First, Nick, like, what is the same? What is the same about men in history to men now? Like, what are the similarities? I think if we if we're going to look at it from a, a physiological standpoint, I'd say we we pretty much look the same. We still have all the the same parts, ideally, unless Ooh. something's changed over the last couple of years. Yeah, hot topic, <laughs> hot topic. Yeah, all right, hot all topic. Right. Um, I think just from a biological standpoint, sure, um, we can we can tick that box. Um, but in terms of uh, like desire and purpose or desire for a purpose, I think that is still there, but it's one of the most difficult things that are that, that men are trying to find words for nowadays. It's not as clear cut as it used to be because there's, it, there's not like 10 different jobs. There's thousands of different, you know, career paths and opportunities and ways in which you can live your life just from, you know, mavericks of the past and mavericks of the, the present day that are just doing things differently and and people are actually quite confused i'd say that there's a little bit more confusion um the social pressure for success i think you know maybe bringing in um the idea of social media and what is being portrayed there are all those ideals you know easily embraced and met or is there another side to that that's been a conversation for the last couple of years as well um I'd say those are those are probably like the the things that I'd say would remain the same and just the general pressure for success. Um, in terms of the evolving roles as a whole, the parts that I can point on that are different, and I'm gonna I'm gonna point for this because I'm sure we're gonna dive into this, which would be uh, the vulnerability component. Um, there's a, there's a there's a requirement now for being in touch with your emotions and this higher level of emotional intelligence. Um, the, the obvious one being changing family dynamics. We don't have communities anymore. So there's a higher expectation in terms of the role of the father in the household. Um, and that looks different from home to home. Mental health with all the above, with financial pressures and, you know, all the different things that are currently happening in, in our current world. Um, that's be, become a, a conversation that men didn't necessarily embrace at a moment, a, a couple of moments ago in time. But now from a corporate standpoint, that's been brought forward more often than not. And this one could be a little bit in the gray, but this is just my you know, personal opinion of fluid masculinity. So the definition of masculinity itself um, is a lot more fluid today. It's not as straight cut. There's no necessarily, uh, there's not a, a square box or a pigeonhole anymore. That's so, a bit to touch on. Yeah, there's a bit to touch on there. Oh, one thing, this is, this is a bit of a weird question, but, and I, I'm literally discovering this kind of understanding or belief as we go through this journey, but I, 
are challenges just the same and they've come in like a different form? For example, what do you think the challenges with social media for, for men these days? And then what was, say, the, the 60 plus guys now, like our parents and onwards, what was their social media back then? What, what was the challenge they were facing that we faced with social media? Did it exist? I think it did in a different way. Yeah, that's um, what I, I, I that's what I want to know. I'm like the challenge yeah, probably I, existed. The comparison factor. They're yeah. like looking up to like, hey man, your horse and cart's way cooler than my um, like yes shoes that I'm walking in. What was it? What do you reckon the challenge was? I mean, I mean, then you've got you know status, which is still very clear today. Yeah. Like that, that's something that you could see, but. It was that whole thing of like people were able to build their lives in 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 that space because there's a lot of quietude. You're not bombarded by inf information, so men focus like you know from a biological level. Just give them one task, they'll do it well. That's their thing. Like they can hone in. If you're not bombarded with all this information at once, you're able to focus, you're able to pursue, you're able to be clear. There's just okay. That's what I do. That's my thing. If I'm going to shovel shit every day, I'm going to be the best shit shoveler on a day-to-day -day basis and I'll work myself up through the company. Then again, we can talk about corporate structure and how the world used to work then, but just for the context of this yeah. conversation, there was, feeling. there was parity. Yeah. Is the challenge distraction? Is that actually something that didn't exist as heavily in the past that it does now? Harry, what are your thoughts? Or that temptation in that distraction as well, right? Like the barrier yeah. to act on that is so much lower because you can act on that from the privacy of your own fucking bathroom for a lot of people, as opposed to having to go out and risk a whole lot more shit, right? But then yeah. I'd also say in terms of that comparison, I would say it's a lot, it would have been a lot healthier because if you're seeing someone to face to face in real world, you get a much more broad picture a much more realistic picture of kind of like where they're at how they're dealing with things how they're like really going yeah. versus like you know you see someone on social media you see the highlights you see like one like little glimpse of a shining into their light maybe that was their golden week maybe it was that was touched up on you know auto tune or face tune you know whatever it is all that kind of stuff and then so you're comparing your ups and downs everything you've got to this one little moment or those pieces that you see of other people that walk around with you know, six packs and, you know, like crazy amounts of money and all that kind of shit. Like I even look at myself in the mirror sometimes and like, fuck, I look fat or like I look soft or I look all these kind of things. And then I see other angles and I'm like, no, I look fucking like lean. And I look at the fucking scan. I'm like, dude, you're 9% body fat. What the fuck are you talking about? And I'm like, <laughs> if I think that looking in, in the mirror, right, then what do other people think? What does Josh have think? those clean? <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I think, I think we might've nailed something there. The, that might be the dirty challenge that sits in front of us that maybe is demanding more discipline from us. Then we, you know, you see the old sayings, right? Hard time create strong men, um, good times create weak men. And I'm like, I don't, is it just a different sort of heart? Like, is it a different sort of heart? For sure, because I like I would not I'm not gonna argue, but like perspective there is like oh, Chris Williamson has a as a name for this. It's like and we spoke about it the other week, Nick, of like when you're at rock bottom or you're in hard times, it is so fucking easy to find a reason to change, right? When you're on rock bottom, you have no money, you have like your partners leaving you, you've got like all this shit against you. It is very easy to find motivation to get out of that place. When you're in that easy time. It is much harder to find motivation because if you do or don't do things, it's not the end of the world. You're not going to be kicked out. Your partner's not going to leave you. You're not going to like die. Like it's not that big a deal. So your motivation shifts from being external when you're in hard times yeah. versus now it needs to become internal, right? Would be my perspective. Yeah, makes sense. So kind of summing up like the whole idea of, our time now, the hard that we experience is we don't have war, famine most of the time. Like it's not, it's not this external hard that we've put on ourselves so much. Well, it's still external, but the hard that we experience is bombardment by so many distractions, centralization, 
um, comparison, is that our hard? Is that this generation's hard now? Well, I think Nick said it before, choice. You've got, you don't, before, if you're in hard times, you don't have much of a choice. Like, do the stuff, do the work, or don't starve and die and get kicked out, right? You're starting to sound like Claude Schwab. You'll have nothing and you'll be happy. So we just we just take away choices is the answer? Is this the answer, Nick? We just eliminate choice? Dictatorship, totally, yeah. That's yeah. it. Just, just dictate everyone's lives. Now, you know what? I think I think there's a layer like beyond what we've just said. This is this is a sore point, sure. But people back then, I don't think that they used to mask what they were going through to the same degree. Like you said, like nowadays you've got social media that you can portray that life is great. My business is thriving. My relationship is amazing. You can't hide that shit. If you're seeing people face to face, you get a feeling. If you're seeing people like you can see that they're building or they're struggling, you could see these things because people actually connected with one another. I think that at, alongside the, the fact that, you know, distraction is a massive component to this, men had more of a community back then. Nowadays, the, the home itself has been dismantled. People are being pigeonholed. Like everyone's got to just look after themselves. It's not, I'm going to look after my community. It's not that I have a brotherhood or a space where I can connect because everyone's like kind of doing their own thing. And you know, I can, I can attest to that because I, I've got guys that I haven't heard from in years that I used to be at, like best friends with. We used to speak every single day. And it's not that we disliked each other. And I'm sure many men are going through this, many people in general, but there's this like massive disconnect versus back then, or even people in their 50s and 60s, I know that they, they're calling their mates of 30, 40 years ago, and they're still having chats once or twice a week. There, there's a different level of connection that I think was, you know, formed during those periods of time. And because these people are just like, I don't see the point of social media and all these different things, I'm going to just give you a call and see how you are. And there's a it, it does maybe come more into that, you know, vulnerability side, maybe more to a degree, more than I expected um, to say on this, this conversation today. But I think that there was, there was more openness and there was more connection and people were like, well, I'm, I'm struggling with this. Can you help me? Or people would be like, Hey, I can see that you're battling with this. I'd, I'd actually like to help you. Cause like, you know, we, we, we are all part of this experience and we, we would like everyone to win. It wasn't just, I'm going to hold on to my shit. I, I, I recall my, my grandmother, actually my grandfather, fuck, I was young. Um, and he used to always have this thing of, uh, if you, if, if there was, let's say someone that was at the gate and it was a, a friend or someone, there would always be an extra seat at the table. That was like his philosophy that he lived by. And there's very few spaces that I have experienced that in, in more recent times where it's like, Oh, you have a mate that just comes and pops by randomly. Nowadays you check the, it's like, Oh, fuck, John's here. I didn't feel like seeing them versus, you know, this is amazing. Like let's, let's all say hello to uncle John, like, or, and, and Martha, or whatever the hell you ever was at your door and you would invite them in and you'd sit there and you'd have a cup of coffee and it, it wasn't seen as an inconvenience because people actually had space and time to live. They weren't bombarded by information and connection was an important part of society. It helped govern the connection of society. So. Now that, that was always my, that was my tick to be, I've created a home. If I come around to my house and somebody else is in my house making a cup of tea, it's one of my mates. I'm like, fuck yeah, I've got a home. Because that's what it was like in my home as a kid. But this is the interesting thing because there might be some people listening that are maybe in their 60s or they're in their 20s and you get this whole, you know, people people label it the boomer mentality. Nobody's immune to that fucking distraction that is like this thing or social media. Because I have watched plenty of people in their 60s and so forth get absolutely tapped out by social media like just they're in it and you're having that conversation you're like hey man where are you and they're just they're on social media they're in the trap i'm like to me it doesn't matter what generation you're from whether you the great generation the boomers or i don't even know who's next millennials x y gen z whatever it is so that is i still reckon one of our biggest challenges across the entire generation but i reckon you've nailed the nailed it on the head with that space we don't have that anymore because we fill it with shit and 
And this, guys, this is a resource right now. Uh, one of the things we teach our guys, the four doctors, Dr. Quiet, Dr. Diet, Dr. Movement, and Dr. Happy, Dr. Quiet. Invented by, it was a thing invented by Paul Check. Like if you don't have Dr. Quiet in your life, the greatest investment you can ever make is in your thinking. And you can't do that unless you have space. It is absolutely key. So make sure you've got that in your life. I, that, that was super interesting, guys, and probably down a bit of a different hole than I expected to go. But funny to come up with, out of all those things, the similarities and the difference in space being the major difference. Because we still had comparison. We s still had all those things. And then we're lacking community in, in space. Have you got anything you'd like to add to it? I'd like to sh shift in there, like from one of the things you said, Nick, as to one of the things that we, uh, the differences or potentially in expectations now is that vulnerability. Do you think that because of the lack of community that partners expect more emotional connection because of that, because they don't get it from else other sources? Right. So when we had tribes, we had more communities, you had more people to rely on. So you had a person for different things. Right. And so your man was the masculine, the power, like the all like all those things. And that was the, their job. You wouldn't go and take your female problems to him and expect him to kind of sit there and listen and like be one of your girls to kind of chat. He'd be like, the fuck are you talking to me for? Go, go away. Like it just like you'd have someone else for that. Right. And then so now because of the lack of communities, we have one person that we expect to be our everything so they have to wear all these different hats which has its own repercussions in terms of like attraction and spark and all those kind of things but do you think that emotional vulnerability or that can that space is a repercussion of that lack of community you mean asking that of men to be vulnerable yes. yeah is a lack of yeah i'll let nick have a stab at that one i think there's like there's maybe like three answers to that question the, the first one would be society has changed. And so the expectations and our roles have changed just because of the nature of change. So we've had to evolve as men. Like the world is asking more of us by, by default as humans as well. Like it's, it's asking more in, in different ways. Like we, we have to evolve, we have to grow, we have to change. So it's difficult to, to compare it's apples and oranges because it's, it's like the same beast, but it's, it's just different environments. The environment is completely different. It's, it's not that you're having to kill or be killed anymore. It's not that you're, you know, like you said, you don't have these, you know, communities of, of people that you get to connect with. Um, and it's all, you know, just shared within that household. I think, I think you've, you've verbalized something that many people struggle with and they don't necessarily know how to say it. Um, from, from the standpoint of you know what our role was then to what it is now i think men have men were a little bit different then because it i, I do think that we were probably more vulnerable in the, in that period of time and i know like maybe not that say from let's say the 50s and 60s onwards, maybe like I'm, I'm talking like, let's go like back 200 years plus, just because of the 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 intimacy in, in community and connection, men didn't have to wear that mask. You could be very vulnerable with your partner in a different way. I, I've, I, I don't know, like my, my, my wife, she's, she's, she's got, a, got a very old soul and the way that she um, expresses that she says like the the way people loved each other then was very different to the way people love each other now and i think if we were to you know maybe transpose this onto this conversation i think men love differently it was a different experience like a woman felt really held and safe and maybe the world didn't see that level of intimacy but in the household it was different like you you felt the warmth and connection from a man, but nowadays men are just very dissociated and they're busy and they are distracted. And it comes back to the information overload. It comes back to the lack of clarity. It comes back to the lack of purpose. It comes back to the lack of support. Because we, we don't necessarily have that to the same degree. And you have all these other expectations upon you and this idea of money that then also just takes away from that presence that people are looking for. 
So I think we had more of an opportunity then to do things we are fighting for now because we don't, we have a lot, we have a lot less space. And so we are very much like, you know, a fish out of water and we're trying to find the water through all these other means, if that makes sense. I, I'm going to hit you with two with a loaded question and I don't have the answer to this by the way either. So, but cool. I figured I'd throw you guys under the bus just to get some real good opinions going on you. But um, the vulnerability piece, like, you know, like you said, Harry, you, you, your wife's best mate, your wife's confidant, uh, you're got, her gossip girl, you're a provider, you're a, like all of these things in there. And I go back to this vulnerability piece and because people talk about becoming flatmates and all these additives that come with that because you lose that sexual tension in your relationship, I believe maybe because you're wearing all these hats. So I asked the, the question and maybe it's a bit of a broad stroke, but should women see men cry? Depends what it's over. Okay, cool. Explain. If you're crying because your child just died or you lost a parent or there's something of that magnitude, I feel like that's a valid reason. If you're, if there's something because you're struggling to control, to handle your own emotions, I don't know. Come on, be dogmatic, be dogmatic, do it. I don't think so. I don't think that helps any, like if it, if it helps you to cry, then maybe, I don't know. I was raised by a woman that didn't even cry at her own parents' funeral. So like, that's not something that comes natural to me. So like, even, you know, people that say like, I just need a good cry. Like, I have no idea what the fuck that feels like, right? So I don't know if that helps people with their protein, processing their shit, but like, I and I can't speak for, for women, but... Yeah. I, I don't see that being a, I don't think she would view you any more favor, favorably by saying that. Cool. So, I, okay. Well, before I go to Nick, I want this question then. One sec. Unless it's something that you're shared with, right? If you're shared in that same situation, then yeah. it's like slightly, slightly different. But if okay. it's just you, she's like standing on the outside and you're just sitting there crying, then. Okay. Yeah. okay. Well, this adds to it then when that shared situation minus the kid or the, you know, member dying is does does you crying take away her feeling of safety as you being the rock? Again, I think it depends on what your in, in what space it is. If it's showing that you're unable to handle something that she is relying on you for, mm -hmm. then of course, yeah. Cool. That's going to show okay. an ability to do that. Like, I don't know. If 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 I expect well, this doesn't happen in our household because I cook, but like if if you know she can't cook and like sits there and starts crying because she can't cook a fucking meal, I'm like, that's pretty upsetting. That's what I'm relying on you for, right? So like, with, valid get point. Together. Okay. So when it comes to like men's spaces and things like that, and having other men being around, and let's go back to that community piece. Do you think it's okay for men to cry in front of other men? I think that's a better space for it. I think it's a better space. I feel like you would be more supported because you would get support from a masculine energy rather than being comforted, which again comes back to, I guess, what we talk about a lot of times, like men don't need to be comforted. They need to be challenged to get over stuff, right? It's not this talk therapy of like, oh, you'll be okay. It's okay. Just let it out and whatever. Like, cool, let your shit out. Let's talk about it. And then if there's action to be taken from it, let's go on that. Or whatever happens from there. Cool. Mate, that bus hasn't, I don't think that bus has completely run over you, mate. I think you've done all right there. You've done what all right. bus? Yeah, <laughs> just throwing you under it, you know. I just wanted to see what would come out of it. But Nick, you're under the bus now, mate. What do you reckon? Should a woman see a man cry? Her man in particular? I think it's, it's, all, it's also like context dependent, to be very honest with you. Um, I agree a lot with... Uh, with what Harry Harry said there, um, if if you're looking at, I suppose I look at crying differently. I see it just as an emotional release in the body, like processing it. Mm -hmm. So there's it, 
I mean, from a biological standpoint, it's incredible what it does to your system when you do cry, like the amount of tension, regulation, like parity, release, endorphins, all the stuff. So it's actually good for you to do that. So if you, if you do feel the need to cry, I mean, go and fucking cry. But it's very different if you're going to continue in that space and then not be proactive and, you know, okay, I've had my moment. Let me like pick my shit up again and just move on with my life. It's very different versus I'm wallowing and I'm perpetuating yeah. and I'm the victim and life is so fucking hard and unfair. And why me? Why did this happen? To, like when you're asking yourself those shitty questions, then honestly, like your, your man card is just tossed out the window. I'm just like, well, dude, you, you, like th this is where you need to stand up and be like, okay, like I've clearly made some poor decisions or life just happened this way. Well, how can I start you know, shifting things back in my favor? Like, you know, taking control of what I can control, shifting my perspective, moving through X, Y, and Z. And I, I think, you know, I, I, I'm a person that struggled to show and express emotion because one of my biggest things personally, which was just dissociation um, mm -hmm. through trauma. So I find that when I've had like these, um, uh, pivotal moments in my life where there is this need to like express and there's a lot of emotion and there is like an, a release like now I, I welcome it like I allow it and I'd, I'd even say now after having a daughter like I just cry when I look at her and I don't feel like I'm I mean if that's just like gratitude and appreciation yeah. like, oh, shit and 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 that's different because I'm I'm crying for things out of joy and and for what it means and there's there's meaning and there's purpose it's just like wow you know when you've had a day and you feel really accomplished and you're just like so grateful and you're in that space of appreciation that then i, I then i see it differently as well um so i think it's really context dependent and it's what you're doing after it emotions are normal you're supposed to feel shit like you're not supposed to suppress and repress all these things you need to feel and heal and move through your shit but it's it's a forward motion there's not just this thing where you wallow and you sit. Obviously, grief has its own dance, but for the majority of other emotions, you experience it and you begin to move on and move forward. So I'm really disappointed, and I hope somebody like takes uh, something that is long form content and just cuts it up and makes it sound like really good toxic masculinity. I'm, I'm just gutted you guys really didn't, you know, give me something to really drive over you with. We, we have I evolved. Think, <laughs> We've evolved, yeah. Because I'd also, <laughs> yeah, go, go ahead. I was going to say, I'd also tie that back to what I said beforehand about the multiple hats. If your woman is the one that you cry to, that's probably going to like yeah. pull that relationship down, right? Because that spark, that, you know, attraction is going to go down naturally with that. That's where having that man, that circle, that community, those people to do that kind of stuff with to help you through that instead of leaning on your woman for that is going to service you and your relationship a hell of a lot better. I think yes. you guys have now some two really important things. One, crying is super healthy. healthy. Well, let's take, call it three things. Crying to your woman may not be the best thing. The ultimate combo is being able to have the strength to cry in front of other men in a great, healthy space. Because I think that bonds men, but it also brings this level of safety and security up in ourselves to be able to relinquish that weight for a moment know that we'll be held by the masculine and be like fuck that was not as bad as i thought you guys aren't well, going to leave me just because i've shown this side of weakness it's like no if you were going to show weakness do it while other men are around because they're your guard like fuck you know when you go in the wild and you're drinking from the fountain you're drinking from the lake if you want some other guy fucking watching your back right hey dude you have the water i'll watch your back it's the same thing in that moment I'm going to be vulnerable. I could be attacked at any moment, like absolutely destroyed. Like I want some powerful men around me. And I think it just, it goes back to the same thing we're doing before community was the big piece and like that distraction piece, but community, if you have it, you can have those healthy moments. Like wouldn't have to wear so many hats. Could you imagine it? Could you imagine just how fucking cool it is having a community of men? So much easier, bro. Mm so much easier if you haven't got one come to one of our events you'll experience what it's like to be around absolute legends so gents as we're saying 
Space. Create some space in your life. Get away from distraction. And it takes discipline to create space. So you're learning two skills at the same play at the same time. You get to analyze your thinking, which is the greatest investment you'll ever do. Because if you can change your level of thinking, you will change the level of your life. And two, find a group of men. Doesn't matter where they are. In person is always the greatest. That's why we have in person events. Three year, they're amazing. If you haven't been to one and you want to come to one or you want some more info, just reach out. Go to our website at uncmp.com. You will see our next event is in May 2025. We're going to Bali. There's about, I think at the moment, there's about 10 spots left actually, which is selling out fast. But yeah, it's absolutely awesome. Come be part of our crew or come into our high performance man group. There's 20,000 guys in there. We're supporting each other all the time. There's resources in there, countless, every week, every day. Come join us. We welcome you with open arms. Love to see you live an uncommon life where you truly get to live into that, no longer that idea of like, what is my potential? It's like, I'm fucking living it. This is my potential. And to live in that space is a fucking adventure. So come and join us, guys. Love to have you there. Thank you for listening. Please share if you found this helpful. Big love to you.